Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 31, and today we're talking about the flanger. So in the FX tab here, the drop down menu, let's go ahead and select this. And on the very bottom, on the fourth row, it's the second module. Go ahead and select that. And on the default drop down menu, select default just to make sure everything is reset and drag the dry all the way to the right so it's completely wet. Now on the analog section, we have a saw wave and it's going to be eight voices of unison for our demonstration. So let's take a listen and see what that sounds like. We have our typical flanging effect. So basically in a nutshell, flanging is a delay type of effect. It's taking your signal, maybe your song, your track, whatever it really is, and it's creating a copy and it's delaying that copy by a certain amount determined by this delay knob here. And what's happening is when these two signals interact with each other, there's going to be constructive and deconstructive phasing going on. So if you overlay those two together at different delay times, the signal is going to be different because you're going to be adding and subtracting the different phase values, creating that effect. So a little bit of history of this, the way this was created is when there was tape reels, they would have a copy of they would have a copy of the signal on two different reels, and that would be fed into a master to be mixed down together. Now they would press down on the tape on the flanges of the tape, and it would slow it down. And then they would do that to the other side and so on and so forth. And that would create the flanging effect. So that's how that was born. A very little interesting history. I thought I'd mention it since we're talking about flanging. So now moving on to the module here. So we have this delay time. So it's go going to be 0 0.001 at the very left and all the way to the right is going to be 10 milliseconds. If it was any longer or substantially longer, our ears wouldn't hear it as an effect. It would basically say, hey, wait a minute, this is just too... Of this, this is the same signal and they're just delayed. So it's not really an effect, it's just a copy of the same signal. But if it's under a certain range, it creates that type of effect that we hear as flanging. So very interesting right there. So what we do is we set a certain amount. So let's say one millisecond right here. So this is going to delay. It's gonna create a copy of our signal. It's gonna delay that by one millisecond. Now we can turn this rate knob almost all the way down to 0 0.005. We can't really go down to zero, but let's take a press a note and see what that sounds like. It sounds different, so let's do some bypassing. We can already hear a little bit of that phase cancellation. Now what this rate knob is doing is modulating this delay time, and we can confirm that if we hover our mouse over this, and it says controls the modulation rate for the delay time. So in addition to delaying the signal, you're also modulating that signal. So very, kind of interesting, a little, little while to wrap your mind around that. And then we have this depth control here, and this sets the depth of that modulation. So it's gonna increase that modulation, the depth of that modulation that's modulating the delay time. So hopefully that kind of makes sense there. So moving on from that, we have feedback, which is also interesting. So we have our original copy, and then we have the copy that's delayed. Now you can take that delayed copy and feed that back into the flanging effect, which is very interesting. So let's take a listen to see what that sounds like. So there's no feedback here, this is just flanging. Now we reintroduce, we feed it back into the input of the flanger. Sounds slightly terrifying. Uh, so moving on, we have in this negative button here. So traditionally what happens, we create that copy of our signal and we delay that, but we can also invert the polarity and then use that and that would be generally called a negative flanger. And then we have the stereo, which is pretty self-explanatory. This is changing the output between a mono or a stereo, depending on what you want to use. And this here is the triangle. So by default, this triangle is on for the LFO shape, and we can turn this off, and it is going to be a sign. Let's go back over here to default and turn this all the way to the right. Now the last two is this HP frequency and the LP frequency here. And this is basically a, a filter that we're going to be cutting different, uh, different hertz or different cycles before they go into the flanger. So take a listen as we change this knob here. So if we don't want certain low end going into the flanger, this is the knob we want to reach for. Let's say we don't want anything below 200 hertz going into the flanger. We'd set this at about 200. You can always right click and then move it for precise stuff if you didn't know that. 
and the opposite is true for the LP freak. We can also bring this down if we say we don't want anything above 5K or something like that that's going into the flanger. So it's going to cut those highs before it gets into the flanger. So we can kind of narrow a certain band of frequency. We can kind of, in a way, band pass before we get into the flanger. And that's pretty much it. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about the other flanger. So with this knowledge you have now, we can easily jump into the other flanger that Pigments has. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.